He had done so many mighty works. But this little woman got after him. And he was beat down so bad. How many of you know the devil can beat you down so bad that sometimes you just don't feel like you're worthy of anything? Sometimes you just don't feel like that you're even worthy to even testify. You're not even worthy to come to church. You're not even worthy to, to lift your hands and praise God. The devil will beat you down so bad sometimes. Amen. That's what was happening here to Elijah. When I get on down here. When he found out that Jezebel was going to kill him. He said in verse 3. When he saw that, he arose and he went for his life. Can you imagine a man of that status running for his life after all that God had, had done for him? And he came to Beersheba, the Bible says, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there, but he himself, he went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came. And he sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Lord, you might as well just kill me. In other words, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, Lord, you might as well just kill me. I'm not worth nothing anyway. I'm not worth a flip. I, I'm just not worthy of anything. You might as well just get rid of me. You know that's what the devil is telling some of you tonight. Amen. I can feel in my spirit here tonight. Amen. That he's been telling you. Amen. That you're not worth nothing. You might as well just get out of the way. You're nothing but a hindrance in this life. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you tonight. Amen. And that Christ died for you. And that the devil is a liar. And the Bible says in John 8, 44, he's the father of life. He lied from the beginning and the truth is not in him. So when you hear those words that you're not worth nothing from the devil, amen, you need to just laugh at him. Amen. Why? Because he's alive. And the Bible is true. And the Bible confirms it. Amen. So if you know you're a Christian, amen, and then you know, amen, that the devil is just whispering a lie in your ear tonight. Amen. Come on. So he went a day's journey. He requested for himself that he might die. He said, Lord, it's enough. Now, Lord, just take my life. For I'm not even no better than my father's was. Just kill me and get rid of me, in other words. But as he lay there and he slept under that juniper tree, there was an angel came and touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Arise and eat, Elijah. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals. And there was a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink. And he laid himself back down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. The Lord had a great thing for him. <laughs> the Lord had a mighty work for Elijah to keep going to it. But the enemy was dragging him down. And that's what I'm saying tonight. The Lord has something greater for you. Amen. That you just don't understand right now. Amen. And, and the devil is trying to drag you down. The devil is trying to get the best of you because he knows that this is going to be a promotion for Christ Jesus. Amen. When God works it in your life. So he arose and he ate again and he drank and he went in the strength of that meat that he ate right there that last time, 40 days and 40 nights and to Horeb, the Mount of God. He had a 40 day fast there. He went on a 40 day fast and he gathered and he came thither 
unto a cave. And the Bible said that he lodged there. He lodged there in that cave. And the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What dost thou, what doeth thou here, Elijah? In other words, Elijah, what are, what are you doing here in this cave? I didn't send you here in this cave. I didn't send you. You came to Horeb. I didn't tell you to go to Mount Horeb. But here you went to Mount Horeb and you wound up in this cave. What are you doing here in this cave, Elijah? That's what God sent to somebody here tonight. What are you doing in that cave? God said, I want you to come out of that cave. Man. Somebody here tonight, you, you, the enemy has slipped in. When we go into a cave, we go into hiding. Caves are places to go into, amen, to hide from things from. God said, there's somebody here tonight that, that, that's hiding, that don't want nothing to do. God's got something for you, and it's a good thing, and the enemy's dragging you down. And you don't understand it, what the devil is doing. You don't understand this tonight. Amen. But you feel lonely. You feel drugged down. But you want to stay in the cave. God said tonight, I didn't want you to go here to start with. You run from that little woman after me doing all these great things for you. I didn't tell you to go to Mount Hor. Here you went anyway. And now you're in trouble. You're hiding in a cave. And God said, I want you to come out of the cave tonight. I want you out of that cave tonight. I want you to do what I called you to do. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, he came to a cave and he lodged there. But it's still recording. And the Lord asked him, what in the world are you doing here, Elijah? And listen to what Elijah said. He said, I've been very jealous. For the Lord God of hosts. Oh, 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 or having a pity party. He was having a pity.